Hey everyone, GM Lee here, continuing with my video series on learning Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, which a lot of folks also call Suede. And in this video, we'll be looking at basic character creation. Why basic? Character creation in Suede is like Savage Worlds itself. Simple, fast, and fun. But it's also incredibly versatile. You can make anything or anyone from any era or genre. Today, we'll start with a character that's a good introduction to the core system rules. Then, we'll get into a whole lot more. In future videos, I'll go over creating a character with powers from the core rules. Then, we'll cover generating characters in specific settings, because settings have their own special rules for building characters. We'll look at Deadlands, the Superpowers Companion, the Fantasy Companion, Pathfinder for Savage Worlds, and more. In fact, what would you like to see? Let me know in the comments below if there's a setting you'd like me to feature in a video. To be a part of these future videos, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell up in the top right corner so you never miss an episode. And if you like what you see with this one, please press the like button. Let's get started. If you watched the last video on basic rules, and of course you have, you've already met the characters Sarah and Blake. Today, we'll be creating Jack as a new character. We play our game using the Foundry Virtual Tabletop, and I'll be building the character there. Once I purchased my Savage Worlds license for Foundry Virtual Tabletop, I had access to a full suite of compendiums that included a complete listing of skills, hindrances, gear, and more, all for the core rules. But you've got lots of options depending on what virtual tabletop setting you're in. And of course, there's the traditional pen and paper character sheet. Pinnacle, the publishers of Savage Worlds, have a free PDF of a character sheet you can download to either print and fill out by hand, or it's also a fillable PDF, so you can get it all done on your computer. So, where do we get started? Savage Worlds gives players a recommended order as shown here, starting with the character concept, what race you want to be, deciding on a character's hindrances, choosing your attributes, picking your skills, calculating your derived statistics, selecting your edges, and finally, purchasing your gear. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it honestly goes by fast. We're going to look at each one of these separately, and then finally, we'll also talk about advancements, how your character can gain experience and improve over time. Creating a character in Savage Worlds is point-based. You're given a number of points to start, you can get more points by selecting hindrances, and you'll earn points in the future with advancements. How many points you get to start is based on what you're buying and possibly adjusted based on your game master and what game setting you're playing in. Let's create Jack. And a name is pretty much all we have right now. Jack will be a character in my 1930s pulp campaign. And the player has a simple idea for the character. He wants to be an explorer. The player starts to flesh out the character more as the picture for Jack slowly comes together. He's spent a lot of time in the wilderness alone, so he's not used to working with other people, and he's used to getting his own way. Jack is also old-fashioned, and maybe a bit naive, but he believes strongly in honor. To him, a handshake is as good, if not better, than a signed contract. The other thing the player decides is that while Jack may not be the strongest man in the room, he's tough and he's cunning, able to take on most any challenge. And now, all of a sudden, the player's vision for Jack is now perfect. This is a wonderful start for a concept. Personally, concept is my favorite part of creating any character. And in my opinion, the more work you put into it, quite frankly, the more you're going to get out of it. It'll also help define where your character is going as you gain advancements and achieve ranks, what's known in other games as getting experience and leveling up. Again, we'll talk more about advancements later. Next is race, and that's a pretty easy decision since this is a traditional 1930s pulp campaign. Jack is a human. But remember, versatility is what makes Savage Worlds great, and depending on your setting, you'll have a number of races to choose from, and for the ambitious GMs out there, Suede makes it easy to create your own races. Each race can have its own advantages and disadvantages. 
In fact, the idea of doing a deeper dive into races gives me an idea for a future video. So let's just stop there for now with Jack being a human. Characters that are human start off automatically with one novice rank edge. Humans are considered to be more adaptable than other races, so having an edge right out the gate reflects this. We'll look at edges in a minute, but trust me, they're a good thing to have. Next up is hindrances, which are a character's disadvantages or personality flaws. And in my opinion, these drawbacks are actually a total positive. You get additional points to build your character, and having personality flaws are a wonderful part of your character's concept and backstory. In fact, hindrances can even inspire additional details to add to both. You can take up to four points in hindrances, and there are both minor and major hindrances. Major are worth two points and minor are worth one. You don't have to take any or just one or two or three points worth of hindrances, but Jack is going to get four. Jack has a solid concept, so choosing hindrances is easy. The player starts with Code of Honor, a major hindrance worth two points, reflecting how trust and being trustworthy is so important to Jack. After all, his word is his bond. Next, he takes Stubborn, a minor hindrance worth one point. Jack is tenacious enough to keep it a problem no matter how long it takes, and he's not used to having to compromise or work with others. Finally, he selects Doubting Thomas because... After all, ghosts are for children, and magic? Magic doesn't exist. That's just for people who are foolish enough to believe in it. Now, mind you, there was that weird time in the Congo. But let's get on with creating the character. Next up are the traits, starting with attributes and then picking Jack's skills. To best understand traits, watch my last video on basic rules. There are five attributes in Savage Worlds. Agility, Smarts, Spirit, Strength, and Vigor. And each character starts with a D4 in each. Players are given 5 points to spend on attributes, and each raise of a dice level, say from a D4 to a D6 or a D6 to a D8, costs 1 point. The player's concept for Jack is that he's physically tough, steadfast, and smart. Smart enough to survive in the wilds for months at a time and navigate without maps. With only five points, this leads to some tough choices. If he's too tough with extra points and strength and vigor, he doesn't have enough points to be very smart or agile. On the other hand, he could increase his smarts and spirit, reflecting Jack's willpower to stick things out. But then he's not physically capable enough. The player finally settles on making his agility, strength, and smarts a d6, then sacrifices his spirit in order to be physically tougher. So he increases his vigor to a d8 and keeps his spirit at a d4. Now, the player isn't entirely happy with this, but recognizes that the character is just starting out and advancements will allow him to add to the attributes in the future. Next up is skills, and personally, that's my favorite part of any character build. Skills in Savage Worlds are very wide-ranging and comprehensive, and that's on purpose, to keep the rules simple and gameplay uncomplicated. The example, for instance, given in the core rulebook on page 10 is the shooting skill. That one skill covers off all kinds of ranged weapons, including bows, guns of every type, and even larger weapons like rocket launchers. Now, each skill in the game is linked to a matching attribute. Stealth is linked to agility, while research is linked to smarts. Players are given 12 points to purchase skills. One skill point buys you a basic understanding with the skill at a D4, and each additional point raises that skill by one die type. And right from the start, every character starts with a D4 in five core skills for free. Athletics, Common Knowledge, Notice, Persuasion, and stealth. Keeping the concept for Jack crystal clear in mind, the player starts allocating points. Being an explorer, he buys academics, which covers archaeology, anthropology, and history. He buys riding, so he can travel on any beast that can be mounted. And he makes sure he has shooting and fighting, so he can protect himself. He buys each of these skills up to a D6. They cost two points each, 
one to get in the first place, and then one to bring up to a d6. That's eight points in total. With his remaining four points, Jack decides to buy Survival, which is linked to Smarts at a d8. Skills can be purchased to their matching attributes level for one point per die. But Jack's Smarts is only a d6. To go that one extra dice costs double, so a d8 in Survival will cost Jack four points in total. The player likes the direction Jack is going, but he still feels that something's missing, just like he did with his attributes. Now that traits have been purchased, we have to figure out what's known in the game as derived stats. Foundry Virtual Tabletop automatically does this for you for all three. The first is pace. Your pace is how many inches in game distance you can run per round, and an inch is two yards in real world distance. The second is parry, which is a two plus half of your fighting die, or just a two if you don't have the skill. And finally, toughness, how much damage the character can take before it actually hurts him. Toughness is two plus half a character's vigor. We'll cover these stats in greater detail in the next video on basic combat and movement. Finally, the player looks at getting edges for Jack. Edges are terrific, and having a clear character concept helps a lot here. Edges are special abilities that can really set your character apart and make them distinct from others. You can create two characters with the same profession and exactly the same attributes and skills, yet they can be completely different because of their edges. Let me show you an example. Here we have two characters. Now both are detectives. But one selects Alertness, Investigator, Scholar, and Connections, while the other chooses Charismatic, Iron Jaw, Streetwise, and Strong Will. We have two characters, but one solves mysteries by reasoning out a solution with intellect and intuition. The other is a fast talker who relies on toughness and determination to push his way through to solving a crime. It's the difference between, say, Sherlock Holmes and Sam Spade, and that's the flexibility of having edges in Savage Worlds. Edges are purchased from the points earned by taking hindrances, possibly from which race you chose, and from advancements. Let's get back to Jack. He automatically gets a novice edge for being human, and he has four points to spend from his hindrances. Now, one edge immediately jumps out at him, and that's Woodsman, a professional category edge for characters that are naturals in the wilds. Woodsman adds a plus two to survivor rolls and to stealth rolls when they're made in the wilderness. Most edges have requirements, such as having achieved a certain rank or having traits at a certain level. Woodsman is no exception. It needs a survival of a D8 or more and a spirit at a d6 or higher. Now that's going to be a problem. Jack's spirit is just a d4. Luckily, hindrance points don't have to be spent just on edges. You can use them on attributes, skills, or to double your starting money. Jack has four points left from his hindrances. While there are lots of terrific edge options still available for Jack, the player reckons they can be bought with future advancements. He decides to go back and use his hindrance points to increase his attributes. He increases his spirit from a d4 to a d6, and that meets the minimum for Woodsman. Then he actually gets a pretty cool idea and increases his smarts to a d8. At two hindrance points per attribute raise, all four are now spent. This is where the player's inspiration now really pays off. Now that Smarts is at a D8, it no longer costs double to go from a D6 to a D8 in buying the survival skill. The player now has an extra point to spend on skills and adds it to his athletics, bringing that roll to a D6. Since Jack spends a lot of time climbing and jumping, as well as throwing the odd knife or two, this makes perfect sense for Jack. Those nagging issues that were bothering the player about Jack's attributes and skills are gone. 
Jack is now exactly what the player had envisioned as a novice-ranked starting character. While Savage Worlds provides an order for the steps to take in building a character, obviously you're going to go back and forth until you get your character just right. Now, the player took a few strategies while building Jack. He wanted to start off well-rounded. He wanted to be very good at the specialties defined by his concept. And finally, he made it a point to look ahead at how he could use future advancements to build Jack exactly how he wants. Lastly, there's gear. Every character starts off with $500, and you can double that by spending a hindrance point at the novice level. Or, you get to add the amount over again if your starting character is at an advanced level. For instance, if you're starting the game as a seasoned character, you'd have $1,000. The core rules cover a wide range of technological levels, right from futuristic to ancient times. The prices and equipment in the book make an excellent starting point as guidelines to start creating your own gear and prices. Setting books will have their own gear, prices, and starting funds appropriate to the era or background. Whether it's called dollars, coins, or credits, you'll always have plenty to spend it on. Let's talk advancements quickly before we finish up this video. An advance is awarded by the Game Master after an adventure or gaming session. You can use an advance to get a new edge, increase a skill that is already at or above its maximum compared to the linked attribute by one dice, increase two skills that are lower than their linked attribute by one die type. You can increase an attribute by one dice, although that can only be done once per rank. You can even remove a hindrance if it's minor or lower it from a major to a minor, if that's possible. Now, how frequently you get an advance depends on your GM, and we'll talk more about that in an upcoming video on Game Master Tips with Savage Worlds. As players earn advances, their characters move up in rank, as shown here. Now, your GM may choose to start characters off at a higher rank than novice, you should still build your character first as a novice and then allocate your advancements. For instance, the GM decides Jack will start off at seasoned rank with four advances. Luckily, the player already has a plan for Jack on how he intends to spend those. So he builds the character first as a novice as we've seen, then uses the four advances to increase his agility to a D8. He buys shooting and fighting up to a D8. Then he purchases two edges, fleet-footed, which increases his pace, and because Jack has seen it all, he buys brave, because after all, Jack isn't someone who scares easy. We'll look at both edges and how they affect movement and fighting in our next video on basic combat. So there you have it, a deep dive into actually building and advancing a character in Savage Worlds. Now, you might have built Jack entirely differently, and with the versatility of Savage Worlds, that's not only expected, it's encouraged. Remember, with role-playing games, it's not about what's right. It's about what's right for you. Let me know what you would have done differently in the comments below. Even better, why don't you tell me about your favorite idea for building a novice character? Email me at gamemasterleed at gmail.com. I'll include the email in the description below. Send me the novice build you like the most, and I'll try to feature your character in a future video. That should cover the basic rules on character creation for Savage Worlds. I hope you liked the video, and if there's anything I like, it's the art assets I use in my games. I've listed the artists, designers, and companies below, and with each video, I'd like to highlight one of them. Today, in a video on character creation, it's only right that we shine the creator spotlight on Greg Bruni Creations, who creates the tokens I use in all my games. I absolutely love using top-down tokens, and Greg Bruni makes the very, very best. Greg makes characters for fantasy campaigns, the wild and the weird west, pulp 1920s and 30s campaigns, superheroes, science fiction, and post-apocalyptic campaigns. 
And talk about prolific. Greg has made 63 sets of figures for his fantasy work alone. The definition is amazing, and you can zoom right in on each token without losing any of the incredible details with each figure. So please, check out Greg's work. His link is in the video description below. I hope you found this introduction to basic character creation to be helpful. We'll take a look at creating characters in different settings with future videos, and we'll be making a lot of characters in short build videos. And who knows? Maybe one will be yours. Again, submit your favorite character to me by email. To make sure you don't miss the next video on basic combat or future videos, please subscribe and hit the bell in the top right corner. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.